Welcome back to Rich Tech Podcast, episode 18. 18. Um, this is going to be a good one. Uh, Watch and Wonders is underway and in full effect. Um, we aren't there, unfortunately, this womp, year. Womp. Next year. <laughs> this year. Next year. We'll but we there. will be there next year. Uh, we're working on some things, so I can't wait. But we do have a lot of friends out there, and um, they're sending back photos and posting photos and, and sharing info about what's happening, and we can see all the excitement, and, and it's, uh, it's, looking like a, it's looking like a really successful event. There's a lot of great things happening. Um, so we'll get to that today, uh, but first, wrist check. Um, this one is a first. Because we're all wearing the same watch. Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, we just happen to be wearing different straps. So a um, a friend of ours, really a good friend of, of Ben's, whom I've recently had the privilege of connecting yep. with, uh, came by today, um, which was funny because he didn't know I was going to be with you guys and popped in with, with a gift for us. And he got us these... These watches, these are new old stock. Um, I, it looks like it's a 31 millimeter case. There's small. no name it's, for it's this. It's small, but it's, it's good. It's, it is very good. There's no name for this watch. It's got an image of Sam the Olympic Eagle on it. And um, so we were gifted this today, actually. And, and looking this up, Sam the Olympic Eagle was the official mascot for the, I think it was the 1994 uh, Los Angeles, California Olympics. Um, this one is actually, A, it's, it's, it's cool for a number of reasons. I think A, because it is new old stock and I've been playing with it, it's a manual wound. It's got a manual wound movement and listening to it, the yeah. the ticking it is ticks like a time bomb. It is yeah. like it is serious, and you can see that second hand just sweep. It's this thing is like never been wound. Yeah, yeah. The movement's pretty. Well, like you said, it's basically new old stock. It is my second favorite thing about this piece is the fact that yes, this was for the Olympics in the U.S. and on the dial uh, surrounding the six o'clock. <laughs> It says Hong Kong, Hong Kong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is just like super strange. Um, I, I don't know where to go with this. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what company is responsible for making this. It doesn't this. Even say it. Like yeah, it's, it's not even like a yeah, it opening, say open it. up the case or something. But um, it actually is. It's so quirky and odd that it's really, really cool. I think this. This is definitely like. The last episode we had with uh, Ricardo, we called Watch Boy Summer. This is my summer. This is my summer watch. <laughs> it's it's definitely, definitely a yes. July Fourth watch. Definitely, yes. for sure. So yeah, because this, is my this was, watch. because it was made for the Olympics, of course. So there's four watches. Our man behind the camera is wearing the fourth one. Mm -hmm. So I have the red strap, obviously. Perry has the white one. I got a white strap. Sean has black, and our man behind the camera, our producer, has the blue strap. So all the colors of our great American flag, of course. Is black in the American flag? I mean, if you draw it, there has to be black. In sure. It. Okay. <laughs> there's, black the, there's black on the dial. Uh, but um, I'm, uh, you know, I, I had the privilege of hanging out with Frank last week, and we'll talk more about that. And um, really, really cool dude. Very, very talented and skilled yes. tattoo artist. Yes. yes. I think he does all your tattoos. Oh, he's done like 90% of my left arm. At this um, point. But really, really cool dude. I like him a lot. We had a good time. And um, very, very thoughtful, man. Thank you. I really appreciate this. I was not expecting yeah, this. I mean, either. it was like, I was just happy to see him. When yeah, he, he, told up me, he told me he had something for us yesterday. And he, then he randomly texted me like, yo, I'll be... I'll see you at three o'clock. He's the dude. We gotta have him on the show. We do. He has some. He has some good stuff, and he got, likes everything. So he can sit down and really be just one of the guys. Yeah, we definitely yes. gotta get him. And on he was. The, he on was the super pod. excited when he found these two because, of course, he's a tattoo artist and someone who specializes. Oh, I totally got it. He specializes. Yeah. In, he specializes in American traditional. So yeah. he saw something with an eagle on it because an eagle is a very like powerful symbol in mm -hmm. American traditional tattooing. So he saw it, and we basically all had to have it. 
Yeah, respect. Yeah. Shout Thank, out to Frank. Shout out to Frank. Thanks, my man. Yeah. Much love. Much love. Um, so, jumping right into it. <laughs> uh, I guess it's only right we go into how I met Frank. You, you, you've met Frank before. He's, you know yes. Frank. Frank's tattooed with him. Yeah. Frank. Oh, yeah, that's right. He, yes, he did. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. So, last week there was a release. Uh, you might have heard about it. Um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything to get crazy, crazy over. It was only the moon swatch release, right? Because, <laughs> uh, because who's going crazy yeah, over going crazy Omega over swatch Omega collab? Uh, yeah, a bio ceramic uh, speedmaster. Um, this thing broke the internet. Yes. Um, there were images put out by Omega and and swatch prior to, but like very mysterious. Mm -hmm. There was one of like like a picture of the crown. There was another picture of like a case back with a planet on it. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was, and that might have that might have broke like it was like Monday when we got those images. Yeah. And then I think it was like come Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> oh, yeah. there was a leak. That's when that's yes. all hell broke loose. All yes. hell broke Wednesday. loose. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Revolution Watch Mag. Word. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, it's funny because I, I I caught the leak, but it wasn't like random. I had been hash looking up the hashtag Omega Swatch every day, trying to figure out what the hell was going on, talking to people, texting people. And then all of a sudden, I, so I, I get up one morning, I check it, and I was checking the hashtag like, I think it was just Omega Swatch. And then boom, I see this. And it's like, pictures of seven of them and i'm like what the f yeah like it was like seven of them and then the room but then that like, like oh there's 11, 11 of them yeah like and then, then <laughs> yeah and then we found photos of more and more and we're like wait we're missing i was two like more. what is Where's going the rest on of them? exactly it was like a treasure hunt and then like the funniest thing too because um shout out to my client um mariano a good friend of mine he um he was like uh he found one of the videos that leaked and someone with like wrist shots and like oh yeah the whole nine just yep. like showing off the watch and when i showed the instagram post to you guys it turned off and i was like oh yeah, man i don't it said, have it said this post is unavailable i was like he, he's what? like post is unavailable then i i i reached out to mariana i was like I can't see the I can't see it anymore. He's like, don't worry. I, I screen, screen recorded, recorded it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh I had uh once I I once I saw the images, I screenshotted them and I posted it. And received a message from a couple of our industry friends. <laughs> and one of them was like, Oh my god, you posted it? The embargo hasn't been lifted. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The embargo. It's all over the place. I'm thinking, so I'm like, he's like, the embargo hasn't been lifted. And I'm like, I didn't understand what he was saying. Yes. I was like, oh, I'm going, I'm going there tomorrow, pick one up. I'll get one for you. Don't worry about the embargo. I'm thinking he's like in another country or something. I don't know what's going on. Yes. He's like explaining to me. He's like, no, 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 no. They share these images with uh, certain people in press. We're not supposed to share them until this date. And I said, well, I don't have an Omega Connect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I will gladly untag them and, and leave the images up, uh, not to uh, to disrupt anything that they have going on out of respect. Um, but they caught on to it, um, and then they just let it go. They let it fly, which I thought was the right move. Yes. And what was amazing was it kind of seemed like they knew this was going to be a big deal, but they didn't know how much of a big deal it would be and like literally broke the internet yes like i'd never seen so much hype around a release before uh and certainly not around speedmaster yeah certainly yes. not around the swatch and not around a swatch quote yes. unquote yes like this was this was crazy and almost immediately we were talking to one another. We were like, all right, we got to get this. Yeah, we, gotta, we have <laughs> game to strategize. Plan, we got to strategize. The game, plan, the game plan was for all of us to, because at first it was two per customer. Yep. So the game plan was for all of us to get two, including Perry's wife. Shout out to Perry's wife. Yes. She yeah. was going to help us complete the set. 
And my girlfriend as well. And Rashawn's girlfriend. So mm -hmm. we were like, okay, we'll own all 11. We can trade them amongst ourselves whenever we want. The goal was actually come back and wear it on this, sh on yeah. this, on this and show. And we were going to yes. have them set up as props all the time. <laughs> it was going to be crazy. Um, that did not work out. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, Risk Check Pod, our whole uh, production crew, we actually, um, we're, we're located in New York City. There's a swatch at World Trade Center. We got online. We got online. Uh, initially, I was in the area that evening, and I stopped by the World Trade Center location, and there was only 10 people online. This was probably around 8, 8.30 p.m. last Friday, and um, the Friday before the launch. And I, I immediately called you guys, and I was like, yo, they're lining up. And I was like, I'm staying. <laughs> yes, yes. I called my wife. She's like, I'm on the way. What do you want me to bring? I got the stool. I'm bringing snacks with Gucci. <laughs> and um, so we were prepared to stay overnight and rock out and get these watches. And then the Port Authority police rolled up and informed us that uh, no one was allowed in the building from one to five. So I was like, listen, I'm not standing outside from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. to come back in this building. I was like, I'm going home. So we went home. We strategized. We said, we're going to come back 4 a.m., an hour before. We get back at 4 a.m. There's probably 150 people in front of us when we get in line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. It was yeah. insane. Yeah. And, um, you know, but we were armed with inside intel. Yep. Yes. And we're and we, yeah. Yeah. it was just crazy. And we had the procedures. We had, we had the, the procedures. procedures. That's inside joke. Uh, we had the procedures. Yo, we gotta find that guy. Get we him on the show. We gotta find that guy, man. Gosh. Oh yeah, we gotta find that guy. Anyway, so <laughs> That's armed with the procedures and the inside intel, we're we're being told World Trade Center has the second largest allocation of moon swatches in the city. Mm somewhere in the neighborhood of 300. So we get online at 4 a.m., 150 people in front of us. We're like, Yeah, we're good. Perfect. We're good. We're good. We're going to get a moon swatch. Maybe not the one we want, but we're getting one. Out of 11, yeah. 300 watches, we're Gucci. Yes. Um, we were not. <laughs> yes, we were not. They only had 69 units. So they say. So, so they say. say. So they say. So they say. I think that they probably honestly had somewhere in the neighborhood of 100. Yeah. They I would did. definitely I mean, say. We, got, we basically got we to got the door. Because we got really close. We got yeah. to the door before we got said to they the were door. Out. I think they might have been, I would estimate, anywhere from like 15 to 20 people in front of us when they sold out. Yes. And... Um, you know, as I, I've never waited online for a release of anything in my life. That's not what I do. I can't quite articulate what moved me to do this other than my love and appreciation for Omega. That's how and I the felt Speed lining Master. up for sneakers in high school. Yeah, It's crazy. I've yeah. never lined up for sneakers. I've never lined up for anything. Talking to a pro. Respect. <laughs> yes. But I felt, I was compelled. I was like, nah, I'm doing this. And I got to be honest, I don't regret it. No, I did it was, not walk so away with fun. the watch. We had a lot of fun. We were online. It was a bunch of our watch homies yep. that joined us. Yeah, they all met us. So we many of them joined there. us that people yes. behind us were getting upset because we just kept, people were skipping the line, <laughs> like legit, and just joining us. Like every, every five minutes, someone was walking up to us and shaking our hand. Yes. Like, yo, I'm in line with y'all. Wrist check. <laughs> wrist, wrist wait, wait. Check. Wrist check. Yeah. I love the show. Yeah. And then, like, full blown conversation. I love the show, man. It's great. And then five, ten in. minutes later, and then they're like sliding <laughs> in. And they're like, All right, so we great. grew, I think initially it was maybe six or seven of us. Yes. And it grew to like 25. Yeah, it was a lot. We added a lot of people to that line. So people were heated. Um, but what was cool was, uh, you know, I didn't know all these people. There were some people that you guys didn't know. It was like someone kind of had everyone. And then there were these dudes in front of us who we kind of connected with that were big watch collectors. One happened to ha had been wearing an Alaska Project uh, Omega Speedmaster. So it turned into kind of like an impromptu like watch meet. Mm -hmm. And 
I had a lot of fun. I got to meet some new people. We connected in line over watches. We had great conversation. Um, there's a couple of those people I left like knew, knowing that like, oh, I got like, I got a new friend. Like, here's a dude that like we can invite to an event or, you know, he's going to listen to the podcast. Like, it was great. Um, we stayed till the very end. I, I refused to leave without getting a watch. <laughs> uh, I bought a swatch. I, you know, there was there was a young lady who worked there who kept coming out and telling people that they were sold out, even when they weren't. And uh, but she would give announcements occasionally about what watches were selling out, what was going on. And I said, "Listen, I'm getting a watch." <laughs> She's like, "There's not enough." I said, "Hold a cue for me." She was like, "I got you." Yes, I remember. That. <laughs> so I did buy a swatch. I bought the swatch cue, and um, but man, I had a good time. There's a second release. Um, happening tomorrow morning. They'll be sold online and in store again. I'm going to try again. This time I'm not going to the store. I'm going to try my luck um, with my laptop and see if I can get one. But um, what a time. And that's where I met Frank. Yep. And that's where we got the opportunity to connect. And so just to give you the background on on, on how I met him. But um what what you what were you guys' opinion about about that whole thing? How did you guys feel about it? About not getting the moon swatch? Well, just about the whole experience. I, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't mind bummed, it. But... I mean, yeah, I mean, of course we want the watch, but I mean, we were laughing our asses off the whole night. I we really had a good time. Yeah, we had a really good time. Yeah, it was great. We had a really good time. We were able to connect. Um, and the people that came too, like I didn't expect, like Aaron came, like yeah. I didn't expect him to really come. It was he legit, like would. a watch me. Yeah, yes. like it was, was kind of like a party that we had online, mm -hmm. and it was it was great because it it bridged the gap for a lot of, you know, like Perry was saying, like someone had a someone or had another yeah. someone, and was like, all right, so this is my guy Larry. Larry meet, you know, so there was so, a lot. So. Of this is like JJ. That it happened. was a lot of it was a lot of connecting. Because, you know, we all share like this mutual thing and it was great. Um, you know, I, I, the same as you, Perry, like I've never lined up for anything or like camped, but there, it was something about it that was like very communal and it was like super fun to do. It really was. And I, and I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I will say, I know there's a lot of talk. I've talked to a lot of people about this, some people who follow us and, you know, the, a lot of the questions are like, does this hurt the brand? And no way. And I, which I don't think so. And no I was way. explaining that to them. I was like, there's no way. Th I mean, th I think this makes the brand richer. I thought it was uh, perfect timing. I mean, in terms of like, you know, the anticipation that was building with Watches and Wonders. And this was the most disruptive thing that Omega could do. Yes. And job well done. Absolutely. You know, for for all that we've seen at Watches and Wonders thus far, and there's been a lot of incredible timepieces that uh, have been released, I think it's still safe to say that the watch of the moment is the a moon swatch. People is still talking about it. Yes. We're People still, still talking about it. Right People still second. want it. People are still lining up for this thing. Well, the craziest thing, too, was like you actually got to see what real demand looks like. You know, to to your point, uh, Perry, and even like, you know, Aaron coming out, like these are guys that are true watch collectors mm -hmm. that like own the most coveted watches in the world between the APs, the Patek. Exactly. Having like yeah. these like- and, and they're guys who also own like quote unquote real yes. Speedmaster. Yes. So that was the thing that was cool too, was that that, that evening- because there was a lot of talk, and I talked to a couple of dudes, and because and, let's be honest, hype beast caught wind of it. Yes, yeah. the whole front of the line was hype it, the whole front of the line was flippers. Yes. There were people trying to make a buck, and you know what? To be honest, I don't really blame them because I wasn't willing to stay overnight. And if you were, you earned it. Yes, go get it. Yes, like legit, you stayed and you stayed outside overnight for this thing. You, if you want to flip it for a profit, get your money's worth. Go, yeah. go get it. Anyone who's, I'll be honest, anyone who's dumb enough to buy it, that's that's on you. Yes. Like, you're paying a grand for this watch. Oh, you're playing just, yourself. Selling for well, that was that. the funniest thing too because <laughs> I. So after we kind of realized that, like, 
we probably weren't going to, um, you know, land the the moon swatch. It was like, I was like, mm, let me see if I can offer like two times retail. I was like, yo, man. <laughs> First, of course, like, I was like, yo, this is my cap, 600 bucks. I'm like, yeah, I got 600 bucks. Ben goes, yo, yo, you can't start too high. You got to start low. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yo, man. Who, I said, the voice I, of reason. <laughs> I was like, tell him four. So yeah. I, was like, I, so I was like, all right, cool. Like, once it said four and everybody's face twist, and I said, 450. And then, like, I was like, all right, man. I just gave in. I caved. I said, I got 600 bucks. <laughs> And the guy was like, "Man, I'm starting at a thousand. You said you saying guy like it wasn't some like 19 year old kid with like pimples on his face Talk about minimums a thousand. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. He was what? like minimum. He was like yeah, it was a couple of them out there. Yeah, it was. Like, I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. I was. This was like, for 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 this, I get it. And what I love about like the Moon Swatch and the, even like what like this, what Swatch Group did as a whole, I think they. They did something that was historic. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I agree with that. To to create this like plastic watch and it has real collectors, hype collectors, and people that are new to the brand to actually go crazy. They went crazy. And that was what I was getting at. Um, you know, there was a, a, a bunch of us that showed up like fully representing so yes. you know i talked to people who were kind of like what does this mean for the brand but i'm like guys like a lot of the people i met in line were wearing actual speedmasters mm -hmm. i wore my speedmaster to this like i couldn't even ar really articulate why but like when i got up that morning i got up at 3 a.m me and my wife and we were like all right because we sit in our alarm we're like we're out and i was like yeah i'm putting on my my speedy like, this is like, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like if you go to a, a concert for your favorite artist, you're wearing a t-shirt with their face on it. Yes. Like, same kind of vibe. And then to meet people who were doing the same thing. And it was like, oh, this isn't hype for you. You love this brand. This is real. You mm -hmm. love this watch. This is real. Yes. And that was the most amazing thing about it for me. And and uh, and we we left with some really good contacts. And and um, I mean, I, I I had a blast. I had a lot of fun. It was great. I can I can say ditto. I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but one shot deal, time well spent. Yes. All right. So moving along, what everyone wants to hear about. Washes and Wonders. Yes. Underway. Uh started on Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. The 30th. Um, we've seen a lot between then and now. There's more to come. I think I think it ends in another two days. Yeah, two days. Yes. I think, yes, it's, yes, I think it's another two days. I'm curious to see what surprises are are left in store. I kind of feel like everyone came out guns blazing and showed everything they had, but you never know. Um, but we've seen a lot. I thought what was really interesting. One of the things I noticed that I wanted to bring up was there were a lot of skeletons this year. Yes, you beat me to the punch because I was thinking that in what my head. What was with that? Everybody there did was a, a lot of skeletons. Everybody did an open work. They did. Everybody. Everyone. Like every single brand. Several well, bucks. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Patek didn't either. No. no. I mean, but Patek has them already. Rolex yes. doesn't. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I was like... This is like the year of the skeleton. It made me think Talk of about, uh, market research, right? So Kinda like exactly. color dials. Yes. It made me think of what we talked about in our last episode with Ricardo when he was talking about how, you know, the timeline that a lot of these watch companies have, where it's like, this is what we want, this is what's in. And then it takes them two years. Because it's like open work watches are the hot thing right now. Let's be honest. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are pretty hot. They've been, it's been that way for about two years, right? Yeah, especially with AP. Exactly. And so now we get all of these open watches. And it makes me think about what he was talking about. I'm like, okay, I get it. And somehow, some way, it kind of does work, right? In the sense of like, we were asking for this stuff two years ago. Two years later, we have it. We're almost at the end of it. But at the end of it, we're getting all the juice. Mm -hmm. 
And to be honest, I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of good. I saw more good than bad. There was a lot of great work out there. Yes. Um, which brands surprised you the most? Cartier stole the show for me. Yes. I'm with you. Hands yes. Down. I'm with you. Yes. But I mean, also, too, um, I mean, Grand Seiko with that. Yeah. Yes. The only thing is, is that they showed off this movement about a year and a half, two years ago. I never saw it. They, they showed this off already. This, this was a thing. It existed. They put In it this out exact there. iteration? The movement, yes. It didn't have a case. It didn't have anything. It just showed off the movement that the technology is real. And yes. everyone who's a fan of Grand Seiko knew this was coming. So, to, but okay, I can, and I can see that, and it's very impressive. Yeah, super to impressive. see it in this case yes. is nuts. It's, it's nuts. nuts. So this is a platinum steel case. Uh, platinum titanium, I think. Is it? I, I think it's platinum titanium. Is it platinum titanium? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, platinum, platinum titanium. titanium. The lugs. I think you're right. Are it is platinum titanium. The lugs are awesome. Skeleton the strap is awesome. Yeah, it's yes. a Arushi lacquered black calfskin strap. That's it's like it's it, inspired by like the uh, the, the armor from. Armor. Yeah, it's right. crazy. Yeah, that's so cool. And that's the thing too. Like when I when I am thinking about Grand Seiko, when I'm talking about Grand Seiko, I always think samurai. Sure. You I know, mean, they have those cases inspired by samurai. They have those ceramic, uh, ceramic titanium covered like uh, GMTs and stuff yes, like that. Yes, yes, yes. And it's like, you know, one thing about just the Japanese and like Japanese design, what they always seem to do is convey a message and tell a story. Yeah, everything has a reason. Everything has reason. Everything has purpose. Um, everything is done, you know, intentionally intentionally um this right here just like does it so you guys know i'm a big art dude mm -hmm. in addition to collecting watches i collect art um my tastes vary they i have a very wide range i'm a big fan of hans geiger who is responsible for the aesthetic of the alien franchise yep. mm -hmm. this is so him mm -hmm. there's some steampunk vibes the colors that's going itself. on here the colors with the jewels yep but this reminds me of some of his work this is like this reads like hans geiger to me this watch is awesome yes like and it to me i was very surprised this doesn't traditionally read as grand seiko to me it's the future now. Though. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. So this watch, I think they're making... 20. It's 20 units. Yeah. $350,000. If I had 350K, yeah. sign yeah. me up. It's like, yo, Grand Seiko went ahead and slammed it on and the you table. Know, you know what like, I love, too? You, people see a watch like this, and they're like, oh, I can't wear that every day. Even yes, you can. You own it, I would. They specifically said, this is the tourbillon that you wear every single day. Every single day. Exactly. Every single day. This thing is beautiful, man, and uh, we were we were we were I got we got some pictures of it from um, from some people at Grand Seiko when it launched, and then a couple of our dudes uh, who were over there, including Ricardo, posted mm -hmm. on his Instagram. He actually got got some wrist time with this. Yes, and it is I mean magnificent. And it's Stunning. thin. It's, it's super thin. thin. Case. Mm -hmm. It's super thin. Um. Man, I love this thing. When I saw that, this is the this is this is one of the best releases of the year, the, especially like tech, technologically. Constant yeah. force tourbillon. Constant force tourbillon. You want to break down what that means? I mean, to to make it really simple, in any watch, make it as simple as possible. In any automatic please. or mechan well, any mechanical watch, there is always energy that's lost in the movement, and that's always on the back end. So basically, it's this constant force. So it uses essentially your pallet fork and your gears and your escapement. They swing in both directions. So there's no lost energy. Mm -hmm. It's all you, stored. Yeah, you, yeah. the energy is stored and then it's dispensed evenly. You don't so lose what's, any of it. So what's longer cool, power reserves, yep. more accuracy for a longer period of time. It, like they said, you wear it every day. Don't worry about it. Yes. I mean, this is literally, this is a watch you could wear every day. It's, this is like, this is... It's a super conversation piece. It, this is a flex, man. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of other things going on here that I think are really is really cool. Like it actually has 
if you look at it, right, it has a power reserve, a power reserve yes. on, I can't say on the dial, there's no dial, but it's built into the movement. Mm -hmm. I noticed that and I was like, what the fuck? What is that? That that little part right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's what, is that called like a scythe, like the Grim Reaper. Like what is I mean, that? it looks like a scythe. That's like which I'm a fan of. It, that's but that's <laughs> so why no, but I like this pointed is, out like it's like super like a scythe. This like, is the hand right here. Yeah. Yes. Right, and this is the actually showing you the reserve. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's what that is. It looks it looks just like together. A scythe like I mean, I, I, aesthetically, like design wise. So the thing that 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 kind of freaks me out about this is that. It's, it reminds me so much of like Hans Geiger's work. It's almost like not Japanese. Yeah. But it is if you are, if you are familiar with like, for me, and where I'm going with this like Japanese anime. Yes. So this watch makes me think of Akira. Yes. Like legit. That's where I go with this. I could definitely see I go to Akira way. or like Ghost in the Shell. Ghost, yeah, you took the words of my mom. I yeah. mean, like, this is crazy. It Bleach. definitely does Fire. have that 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 anime futuristic like but when like anime was and i'm a nerd out real quick but like anime 90s. was exactly in the that yes yeah, in the anime, 90s. anime in the 90s. was like supreme and most of the and most of the characters were kind of like half man half machine yeah it's almost like it, it, it looks it looks gritty it, but yeah it's not it's no there's a there's a lot of balances happening here there's a there's a there's a grittiness there's a sophistication there's the complicatedness of this. There's like this steampunk aesthetic that's happening. But then there's also like a level of thoughtfulness when you even look at the power reserve. It's like they thought of everything. And um, brilliant, brilliant execution. I'm a big fan. In terms of um, other open work pieces, Cartier, as you mentioned, yes. stole the show. Yeah, I don't even understand how this works, to be honest. <laughs> The movement is built so into the is, rotor. So this is this is the Marseille miss. Come on, French lesson. Yeah, <laughs> you French because no, I, I don't I don't even know what I'm saying right now, bro. This is the Marseille mysterious. I'm just gonna say the mysterious watch, right? Okay, <laughs> boom. Um, so apparently this piece is inspired by a clock that uh, Cartier used to make somewhere just after the turn of the century, like the 1910s, mm -hmm. uh, called the Mystery Clock. Yes. Model yep. A. Model A, yep. So that's what inspired this piece. So, and in terms of the history of that and how this works, which is kind of crazy because when I was reading about it, before I was reading about it, I looked at the watch and I was like, Houdini. Yes. Like, it looks like a magic, magic trick. Magic trick, yep. Right? And so that was the intention behind its design. So the way that it works, and I'm still trying to understand it because it's like you can read about it, but it's still, it, it, even in reading yeah. about when it, you when you it, look it at it, sense. it doesn't make sense. It still sounds like magic. There are like these six sapphire discs that are in the case, right? There's no dial. There's just the surrounding edge of the dial that have the Roman numerals. The movement doubles as the rotor. Yes. There are two sapphire discs, one on the back glass uh, uh, case back, one on the front. Inside are the other four, which allow the rotor slash movement to turn, but also the hands to operate to stay still, right. yes. the way that they need to do to, to stay still, but to also like move, move accordingly. Changes. And tell time. It's nuts. So it's open case. You can literally see your wrist through this watch. It is not manual wound. It only, it has to move. Yes. So you're going to have to spin this piece around a little bit to get it working. Yes. But beautiful. I mean, to me. I'm extremely impressed. Not only am I, imp so, so here's the thing. And I was talking to someone about this, right? When you talk about like skeleton watches, and um, and I said something to the effect with this person, I was like, I said Cartier made skeleton luxury, and they said, what do you mean? You know, you have Hublot, you have all these other brands that they do skeleton watches. These are the price points. I said, I'm not talking about price point. Yes, I'm talking about aesthetics. 
Typically, when you see a skeleton watch, you go, if it's done well, that's a cool watch. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool, right? Okay. Cartier has managed to take this and make it look luxe. Yes. It's a totally different vibe. Is it a cool watch? Yes. But it also still feels very luxurious. Yeah, that'll be on the Oscars the red carpet next year. For real. Oh, 100%. For sure. For real. This, for me, this was one of my favorite pieces. I would say, I would rank this, for me, this was number two. This was number two. To the Grand Seiko? No. Grand Seiko wasn't number one for me. Really? No, but the Grand Seiko's up there. Grand yes. Seiko's great. I'm talking about in terms of like surprises. Oh, surprises. Yes, 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 right? yes, yes. Like yes. Grand surprises, Seiko, yes. I'm surprised. Yes. But I'm not, but I know they have, they can do this. Yes. Right? Yes. This, in terms of technology and, com, you know, sort of compiled with the aesthetic, very surprised by Cartier. Yeah. This, to me, is like, this is one of my favorite watches mm -hmm. that, they, that, that was released at Watches and Wonders. I agree. I agree. Even like the... Um the tanks that they introduce because they had some tanks that, that had, they had some mask. tanks they had some the, the ones that kind of had like that skeleton it was like weird it was like not really skeletonized it was like kind of like cut out they did a bunch of collection prevé stuff yeah like about. those like that one is those ones were pretty cool because they also did like a, a specific crash they do those enamel crashes they did the crazy. enamel, enamel crashes. crash oh my god talk about being like, like, crazy master like masterpieces just reminding me how poor i am <laughs> because they made 50 and I am not one of the lucky few who will own one. Oof. Um, what were your favorite watches so far? Oh. My my favorite watch is that Patek Calatrava. The Calatrava. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Let's let's talk about that a little bit. Yes, you did like this one. 5226G is the reference. That's hands down my favorite watch of the whole show. And uh, so what's interesting about this one, I really, really do like this one as well. I like everything uh, Patek introduced at this show. Yeah, me too. I thought it was all hits. Mm -hmm. I really do. Um, my personal favorite, and we'll talk about it later, the travel time. I thought the travel time was amazing. But we were talking about this off camera, and it was like, I love you the way you described it. You was like, if Patek did a field watch. Yeah, it'd be this. If Patek did a standard issue military watch for World War II, this is what it would look like. And it has that vibe and it's crazy. They, they themselves describe it as having a vintage feel. It does. And, but what, what kills it, what takes it to the, to the, over the edge, A, the dial. Yep. They the call, dial they is call amazing. It an asphalt dial. The, yeah. I mean, beautiful. Um, and then this hobnail edge. On the case. On the crazy. case. Yeah. You know what's crazy about this? This watch to me screams like the best way I can describe it is is this is like I would expect this from like a Virgil Abloh yes. Patek like collab. You know what else I like too? Like what I love about Patek's like you know casework, um, even with like their ladies like there's like a specific ladies piece mm -hmm. and like the nickname is like the three rings yeah. because like it they like. You know, on the side of the case, all the way through and through, is like three rows and like layers of diamonds. But it's kind of like, you know, the top half is kind of like in, but yeah, then the middle is kind of like yeah. out. It's yeah. like, it's like it plays with this manipulation of like shapes and how it looks and meets the eye, which is like so impressive. And I don't know if, if Patek has kind of done that crazy like casework with the men's piece, but then to see it with this, it's like, yes, they did dig in their bag. And, you know, although, because in the beginning for me, and, and I was talking to um, uh, Nick Milo off camera, um, and I was like, uh, I'm not really too, like, hot for Patek. Just being honest. Sure. Say I'm not too hot for Patek. But then when you have these images pulled up, and then when you start to look at them, you go, Oh, this is the callback. This is the history. Yeah. Like you like these watches, sure, like to someone that doesn't know what they're looking at, it looks like a watch. 
But that's kind of the dope thing about it. Yes. Yeah. It's like it's like a sleeper protect. It really is. Like everyone, yes. like everyone says that the Aquanaut's like the sleeper sports watch, which it is. It's yes. on the rubber strap. It's definitely under the radar. But now totally. it's iconic. Now yeah, in it's a way iconic. where like that case design is recognizable. I think the Aquanaut is the future of sports watches for Patek. So Patek. What, I think this is the future of the Calatron. I agree. And that was and that was something that like I definitely had to share because I didn't talk to you guys about it. And I was like, I know for sure when this episode airs, everybody's gonna fact check. And like, yes, I like I wasn't too hot for it, but now looking at it. And like kind of doing my homework. Now I'm like, oh, okay, this is a call back to this. This is why this is meaningful. So on and so forth. Ah. Aside it makes aside sense. from this very amazing dial and the hobnail uh edging on the case, the best part about this is that it comes with that black strap. Yeah. Because this brown strap is atrocious. I'm not, ah, I'm not I wouldn't say that. that. I'm not worrying it, it on that strap. It. The I black strap that. it comes with. Is amazing. Stealth it out. I yeah. like the brown strap. I agree the black strap is better. Uh, but I'm not mad at the brown. I do like the contrast because you do have, which is interesting because I've never seen this from Patek before, but they're doing like a faux patina. Yeah, kind on of, the numerals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, no, actually, yeah, it's a it's a faux tina for sure. It is. It's, it's brown. It's and I've never yeah. seen them do anything like that before. So it 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 uh it 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 makes it feel it feels more youthful. Mm-hmm. This asphalt dial feels, uh, you know, pun intended, streetwear. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And so it 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 kind of feels like Patek is like okay, especially with what happened with the Nautilus, the, with Tiffany, that they are making strides to appeal to a younger demographic. 100%. That's what. And we'll get to that later, but that's what it feels like with the college and, and I love that it doesn't feel like they're selling out. It yes. doesn't. It, it was what, the coolest part too is the fact that they actually did something outside of their DNA, and it was done tastefully. And when we get and we dive more and we talk about like other brands and what they were, what they did, I do want to kind of bring that back to what makes Patek so special mm-hmm. versus so many other brands mm-hmm. that just like. You know, talk, talking back to um, Ricardo's point is like, we know when, you know, someone's trying to pull the sheet over your head and like, you know, pander you yeah. and like, you know, and, and play with you to say, oh, great. This is like, this is our new novelty. And you're like, yeah. what is this? Well, that's, well, <laughs> uh, that's probably my favorite thing that Patek did is that they went into Watches and Wonders and didn't show a single sports watch. Yes. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to okay. that. Yeah, we right, jump in. We'll we jump in. We'll get to that. that. We're having too much fun right um, now. My favorite watch so far was, um, and we'll we'll pull up an image of it um, so you all can see. But the two twenty two Vacheron, yep, Constantine, yes. yes. And so what I'm loving about this because I know how much you love it because you commented two twenty twos for the crew and you are a fan. I said. I'm looking for Vacheron to bring X back. You said, I don't think Vacheron's doing anything. I'm not checking for Vacheron. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they just brought back something that's 70 years old. So what? They didn't <laughs> do nothing new. Fine. They did, they, not they did new. new stuff. All right, sure, sure. They did. Listen, but the 222 ain't new, and that's what everybody's two, two, going two crazy over. The 222, two, two, everyone's going crazy over. Rightfully so. It's fire. Uh, but they also did an open work overseas. Yep. That's beautiful. Titanium. The tradition now... Um, perpetual calendar, amazing. Yep, gorgeous. Sure. Like Vacheron VC, and, and that's what I was saying. Like it, I wasn't looking for one piece. I said it was like, okay, who do who do you think might bring an X factor? Who would be the X factor? Mm-hmm. You didn't they expect showed, any of that though from them. Hmm? You didn't expect any of that from them. No, I had no. Ex- I, all I know was they. All I knew was they had a lot of momentum, and I knew they were going to go for the gusto, and they went for it. And I thought all of the decisions that they made, design-wise, the you know the updates to the lines that they did, perfect. I know you how you feel about the overseas. I personally love the overseas. One of my favorite watches. I think it's great. On a bracelet, steel, gold, don't matter. 
I want one. It's, it's fire. <laughs> I'll take the I'll, I'll take the I'll take the titanium open work. Sure. Yes. Um I'm not but I thought, time. man, like there was something there was something to especially like the traditional, the perpetual calendar. Um I love it. Uh very protect. Very mm. protect. Very protect. Even in like strap choice. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. Well, if you um, take the if you take Vacheron off of it, you would think it's protect. It looks like a padded. You would think protect. A hundred percent. Um, but a beautiful watch. And I thought, you know, for me, that was my favorite. Um, and I have a lot of favorites, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. It's really hard to choose, but I was really, really excited by what I saw uh, in terms of like their overall release. Yes. Like a lot of excitement. Definitely. What about you? Um, I, I really, really, really did love the, um, the Constant Force, of course. Okay. But, you know, I think a brand that we do kind of, that we, that we appreciate and we love um, and sometimes we, we give them their flowers, but we should give them their flowers more. And I would say you least not in. Yeah. That new freak was crazy. That the, new the freak, freak S. The Ooh, freak S. Crazy. Fire. Yes. The freak S. Um, one of my, one of my favorites. I love like the twin, the twin tourbillon, mm -hmm. which was like really, really cool. Um, they dug deep into their bag. Going back into 2001 with the original Freak, and you can see those callbacks. Yeah, which was like really, really cool. And I mean, it's it, what I what I what I what I love the most too is like when these brands do go back to their essence. You got to think about Yuli Snart and like these guys are a baby in the industry. Yeah, you know, to 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 have archives from like literally 20 years ago. To go ahead and still be relevant to now. That's what's really impressive about them. That and, you know, there are very few brands that have their own design language that that no one touches. And they still uh, touch on and elevate on. And that's kind of one of the things that I really, really like about UN. And there was a brand that I was really focused on going into Watch Wonders like, I want to see what you do and kind of had an idea yes. of the direction that they were going to go in. Yeah. But but really impressed by the execution because they're they 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 have their own design language. They reach into their own bag, they bring things back, but they innovate on it. Yes. And they did a really, really good job with a lot of these updates. Really, 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 really. And good I, job. I still think in terms of like, I think by the time we get to the end of the year. And, you know, we have another annual recap mm -hmm. and we talk about like standout brands that made noise. And I think UN will be at the top of that list. 100%. I really do. And the Blast Moonstruck is still one of my favorite watches of the year. Shook, shook, yeah. shook things up. The campaign, the rollout. And they're still doing it. When you yes. look at like the, the, the advertising stuff that you know the campaigns that they're putting out in social media for a lot of these pieces they're releasing um no one is doing anything like this no everything feels monumental it, there's a sense of fomo that comes about that i don't often get with brands and i'm like man i gotta figure out how to get a un <laughs> <laughs> that that hour striker that they did last summer is still one of my favorite things. Yeah, that's a yes. good one. Yes, I yes, think, yes. I think bangs. Yeah. Legit. Like literally it bangs. It tells you the hour on the hour. <laughs> it will sound it up for you. Um if you had your pick, which watch would you you take right now? Fifty two twenty six G. The fifty two twenty six G. And I'm wearing it I every know. day. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say the freak. You're gonna say the freak. The freak I, S? The freak S. If I listen. Shoot, I take I take a. Uh, I would to be fair, we both would probably take a lot from watches and wonders. Yes, there would be a lot. Yes, even so, like that 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 Dumont. That so that's what I was gonna get to. <laughs> that crash, so, that crash, the crash is, is close fire, second for me. But you know, knowing what I like, my taste, where I'm sticking to, like if I had my choice, pick of the litter, I'm going with the Cartier Santos Dumont Gold. Oh yes! Like yeah, I'm crazy. not leaving Watches and Wonders without this. Dial is crazy. Strap is crazy. Yeah, green. That this green is, is like, like that's a strap I don't have to change. No, you never change that. The color of the gold. Yes. 
is beautiful. It's so yellow. Yes, yeah, it's, it's almost white. It's, <laughs> it's crazy, and it and and it looks. It's, it's like staring into the sun. It really it, is. It 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 takes on like this like enameling kind of like look and 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 like I said, it does look very white. It looks off shell. It looks aged. It looks weathered. Like it checks all the boxes. This is a beautiful, beautiful timepiece, and. Um, what I love about this is that, because we talk about juxtaposition, there's so much contrast. From the design of the dial, to the color of the stone that they chose for the crown, mm -hmm. to the color of the strap. Mm -hmm. I mean, executed perfectly, like very intentional, very thoughtful. I appreciate everything about it. This to me is a Virgil-ish. Yeah, yeah, it is, and in a lot of different ways. And what's cool is too is like the geometrical shaping yeah, on the dial. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cool. Only 250 units. Oof. So this is going to be a piece that caused a lot of grief. Yes. Um, but this is if I if I had my choice, you know, thinking about beyond what I what's actually accessible to me, uh, and I could leave with anything. This is what I'm taking home. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the Dumont. Fire, fire piece. Uh, moving along, going to what people want to talk about, because we got to talk about it. Yes. Rolex. Oh. <laughs> I roll? Did I get an eye roll from you? Yes. Why? That's your brand, dog. I was very, 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 very underwhelmed. Like everyone is every year with Rolex? Ooh. Um, the last exciting thing they did was colored OPs that now no longer uh, exist. I enjoyed. So last first, first, yes, <laughs> first, yes. come on, please. let's give him his flowers. Yes, okay, fine. because he you was right. It. I did call it. They I caused them, them a lot of grief. I call. I called it. He called it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're they got on the rid of is. everything. Well, first of all. Let's put it this way. So the red and the yellow are gone. Word Completely. On this, word on the street is red and yellow were very hard to produce color-wise. And they were getting, they were throwing away more dials than they were actually able to produce. So, it so if you have one. It wasn't a money maker. Good choice. In terms of, if you think about buying for investment. Um, you are now one of the very few that will ever own the mustard or ketchup. <laughs> Rolex or <OP. laughs> Uh, <laughs> the mustard and ketchup. I love that's that. how I look at it. When I see them together, it makes you think of a hot dog. Yes, put a yeah, put a Nathan's. <laughs> uh, but both are dope. I love them. I mean, actually, I really like the coral, coral and I and I love the yellow. Yeah, so I'm not hating on. I'm just joking. Um, but if you got one, kudos to you. In terms of the pink and the turquoise, they are now only available, I think, in 36 and 31. Yes. Yep. So any of the size, those are done. We did see that one sold with Phillips, I think, yesterday or the day before for about 45, mm. close to 45. It was in the 40s. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so those are still trading very, very high. Uh, but you were right. So we give you your flowers. Thank you. Rashawn was right. We were wrong. You should make a T-shirt that says that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Limited run. Well, Sean was right. Je je le coute. So in terms of what was released, let's start with what did you like? Uh, I'm a fan of just about every single day date. Okay. Fire, yeah. especially the gem set ones. Okay. The, yeah, the, all the gem set stuff was great. You know, some people did beef about the platinum sort of like skies sky colored sunburst dial day date them just adding a fluted bezel but yeah. people have been asking for a people bezel. have been asking for it people and have to be been honest asking. now you got it, it and if, it looks if way you better. want a day day you probably you want, want a day day with bezel. a fluted bezel you don't want a smooth bezel yeah. yeah so i thought it was interesting that they made that tweak um you know if 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 i if i could access one if i could afford one i would own the watch that, that's a blue dial i'd wear it's a beautiful piece I'd still do it on a smooth bezel though. I'm not, I'm not really moved by the fluted bezel. Whatever, man. <laughs> I I still do. Would smooth. you wear a date just on a smooth bezel? I would do smooth bezel uh, oyster bracelet. Yeah, but that's not an option for a day date. 
Yeah, so then I, that's you, what I'm saying. Stuck, I don't want a smooth bezel yeah. on any any th- any you know, Rolex model with a date. Any <laughs> Rolex. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Mm-mm. So you know, okay. So you like you 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 the day dates you're vibing with. What about what about yourself, Rashawn? Um, what I really liked from Rolex. Oof. If you don't like anything, that's yeah, cool too, right? too. Yeah, I mean, like, I just really... You know what? Actually, no. I'm lying. You going to say the Air King? No, 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 no. I like the green... I like that they added the green dial to the day just. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm not the mad green, at that. The green 41. I'm not mad yeah, at that. Six, yeah. I, I'm it's not mad at that. About time. It's good. Very classy. It's good. Time. Very it's classy. Good. Yeah. I like that a lot. And that and the I, choice of green was great. I thought it was great. I thought it's it's like a sunburst green, so yes. it plays with lights. Very nice. It's yes. the same green that's on the Platinum Day Day. Is it? Yep. I don't think so. It looks a little different. I got to check it yeah. out again. Yeah. We'll pull it up. We'll pull it up. We'll see. Um, for me, um, which was very interesting, what I like, let's see, did I have it here? I have it here. Here we go. This is, this, this might, if, 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 if you remember any of the conversations we've had about Rolex, this might be a surprise to you because I'm not a fan of the Outmaster. Personally. I don't think it's a bad watch. Mm-hmm. Just not for me. Yes. But this white gold falcon dial, absolutely beautiful. I love it. To me, this was one of the most exciting pieces. I really, really enjoy this. Yeah. I, I wish the that- falcon dial is, is gorgeous. Yes. I like the 42 size. size yeah. The proportions are right with the size of the actual dial. I, I think it's a hit. Um, I feel like this might be a sleeper on a lot of people. I think when you look at the dial and the fact that it puts on a yacht, yacht master, probably won't be around very long. No. Um, so if you are offered this watch and you can afford it, pull the trigger. Don't be a fool and say no. Oof. This is a big deal. I don't think you'll see something like this for a while. Yeah, I, I haven't seen like the yacht master. The only thing, the only thing that was like interesting that the like that the yacht master has like offered as far as like dial wise is just like the pave which is well they did have there was like a like a pearl rainbow dial that they there was a mother of pearl dial on yeah, like a solid that was, yellow gold exactly one. that was fire yeah that was a yeah. while ago though. long time yeah. ago yeah beautiful watch mm-hmm. but that's, just, but that's did, very rare but, but that's with the bracelet yeah you've never seen it did, on this like sportier model no, they did rose gold the, oyster flex with a diamond pave dial like rashawn said but yeah. that was it and but nothing like this on the oyster flex no nothing with a with like a stone dial no yeah and in ter- and white gold case, right? We were all hoping that they were going to do the titanium, but deep down we knew that wasn't going to happen, yeah. not for the public. But well, they should have did it over what they oh. did with that GMT. But oh god, <laughs> <laughs> over tell the, them why you're mad. So over, going into what you dislike, I guess we can go right into that. The the upside down GMT. Exactly. No, it's not a lefty watch. It is literally an upside down GMT. They, the date's on the wrong side of the dial. Yeah. It is an upside down GMT. So I was saying, the I was saying to someone, we were, talk, we were talking to someone today, and we were joking around, and he was like, yeah, they flipped it. And I was like, no, it's just they turned the case around. Yeah, the case is literally upside down. The case is literally, and they just, they the just put the parts in differently and gave you a different dial and crystal. So what, this, so what this says to me, that Rolex is in trouble. Does it? Yes. I, think, I think they do this for a year and dump it. Just My, like the no, but what I'm trying to say is the simple fact that they went ahead and literally took the case and turned it upside down and like punched the dial in there and was like, look at a new watch. Like means to me that they're struggling as far as like production, design, the whole nine. I, I, I would, I, I think that's a heavy speculation, but I am with you. Yes. I am with you. I think ultimately, right, it's Rolex. We won't know. But it feels like they are struggling I with this release. It's like LeBron James lazy. playing uh, injured. <laughs> yeah, but it's like they don't have to do much. They don't. But and like so it's like this. to be that lazy kind of makes it feel like it's like they're in the spot where they're like, 
We don't know what to do. So you know how off camera yes. I always say Rolex is the retro Jordan of watches? Sure. All they have to do is stick to that. Give us the same watch in a different color. How happy will we but have been if this was a, a Coke I feel bezel? You, I, feel, I feel you on that. But at the same time, the Rolex brand is stronger than Air Jordans. Because Air Jordan will release a sneaker that you're like, eh. They can do anything. And people will And they it. literally did virtually nothing. True. And that's the thing that's like... For me, that's like, what a waste. And I, you know, we posted that image of Stone Cold Steve Austin doing the stunner <laughs> on The Rock with The Rock being Rolex and, and, and Stone Cold being Omega. And yeah, shout out to Omega. Yes. You won this battle. Yes, you because did. Because the moon swatch is hotter than any Rolex that came out this year, yep. which oh, is 100%. crazy. 100%. 100%. Like... Even still, at the same time, like, if you're going to do a lefty watch, either A, traditionally it should be a diver, B, don't make it a day and night indicator <laughs> because the watch the watch already looks upside down. So then when you function the GMT, the watch looks like it's even more upside down. Like, it's a, that, that part is a little wild. So <laughs> you here's my upside thing. Down watch that looks Let me be down. honest. I do not hate this watch. I do not hate this watch. I just wanted more. Yes. I wanted more. I expected more. What if they make this, like I said, for a year, get rid of it, and then turn it I into a standard a, Listen, GMT. I'm not mad at it. I think it's a cool watch. I'm not mad at this GMT. I think it's a cool watch. I just, it, it just throws me all the way left because I'm like. <laughs> well, literally, it's a lefty watch. I know. <laughs> I, and, I, and, I, and I'm left-handed too. So, so I'm like, like I, I, it left me wondering. I was like, well, what else is coming? And then it was nothing else. Yeah. You know, they had the Air King. Yeah, they put crown guards on it. They, they put, put crown a, guards on it. They put a zero they, in front of the five. They put a zero five. in front of the five. Great. Uh, the only thing, so I, I do like that they updated the case. What I do love is that they updated the, 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 the 369. Too. They added looms, mm -hmm. which should be on it. Um, it, it, it it's, it's like... It kind of feels like a do-over. Yes. Um, which Rolex does do-overs. Uh, that, 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 but to do it on a, a model that's like almost entry-level watch for them is weird. Well, this, everybody's this is, least favorite, too. This is going to be like... That, that, yeah, <laughs> it was like, who comes into an ADM and is like, well, hey, you guys got any Air Kings? You, well, to your point, this no, is you gonna said be, it before. This is going to be like babies for a sports model. There's gonna be a lot of 18 year olds graduating high school. Let me tell you, you're 18, you're you're you want a Rolex, mom and dad are willing to 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 put that together for you and, and hook you up, get an OP. <laughs> Skip it. <laughs> Skip the air. Skip key. this. Skip this. Get the an OP. Yes. This will not be trading above crazy above value <laughs> ever. Even when it's discontinued, people are gonna be like, you know what? I'm good. Yes. Don't want it. I don't really want that. No. No. Get an OP. Yeah. Uh, you can pass on this. Unless you really love it. If you really love it. And, you know, we talked about in another episode the history of, you know, if they, if they were familiar with the history of this dial, I think go for it. At, at any point, you know, if you find a watch that you're absolutely in love with, regardless how anyone feels about it, mm -hmm. pull the trigger. Yes. Go for it. Yes. If you love it, Get it. Um, but if you don't, it's not worth getting just because it's a Rolex. So there's that. They also updated the Deep Sea, which I thought was weird because it's like, why? Well, they did this last year with the Explorer also. Explorer 2, same watch, new movement. They didn't change a single thing about it aesthetically. They just changed the movement, which is fine, whatever. Like, I love an Explorer 2. I, you know, if I don't own one, I'll go after the latest one. But the deep sea is, or the sea dweller, rather, is so specific. And there's very few guys that pop off yeah. on this watch. I don't get the point of updating it. Well, the reason why a guy, partially, the reason why most of these guys get these watches is because they can't get a sub. Sorry, I took the A out the room. You did. Yeah. 
Because I feel that one. If you're one, if you're one, and there were no guys. updates if on, you, there were no one updates those guys, on subs. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, no, no don't, don't apologize. They, no they made updates. that decision. <laughs> they have to live with it. There were no <laughs> updates on subs this year. But why? They just did an update on the sub. Which one? What? They just made it a 41. They made it bigger, yeah. Oh, please, whatever. And it's a new movement. Damn. New bracelet. Great. Thanks, for Alex. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Let's go back to Patek. <laughs> uh, so, what I love from Patek this year. Is, is this why you told me to be quiet? Yes, the travel time. Yeah. Um, which has the asphalt dial. Still feels very streetwear. Mm. Um. This is, this is, I think this is a major contender for watch of the year. Digging that strap. That's the strap that's on. It's on the, the strap Kala that's Trava. on the Kala Trava also. Yeah, I know. It's fire. You can it's get dope. both straps in the box. No, no, no. Uh, it's like a canvas strap, black yeah, canvas strap. Great. Yeah, it's Which is, it's interesting for rope for Patek because that's so utilitarian mm -hmm. for a brand as, as luxurious and coveted as they are to just say like, we're going to bring it all the way down, but we're still turning up. Yeah. And so it's this mashup that I think is awesome. And I'm curious how their um, hardcore fans feel about this. I mean, from what we, I've seen on social media, people love it. They, yeah. love they feel yeah. like they found the protect they can wear every day that's not a sports watch. Mm. And with that being said, this is still a crazy ass watch. Yeah, it it's is. It's an annual calendar with a travel time. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, I really dig this watch. And it has syringe hands. Yeah. So I think um, it has the syringe hands, which some people are complaining about. I don't know. I mind. love syringe hands. I think they're great. Yeah. Um, but what I loved about this release was they, they brought out a new design language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, now that wasn't something I was expecting from They're listening. Protect. They're, they're listening. They are they're, listening. They're getting with the culture. It seems so. They are definitely getting with the culture. And for uh, those brands that aren't, they, they're going to feel it. Even the, you have the perpetual calendar that they released, the 5320G. Yeah. Um, it still feels very luxury. It's still very toned down. Mm -hmm. um, another design language, I think when you look at the numerals and the how the dial is laid out the step lugs the yep. step lugs like step lugs is fire yeah that's old school i've done that forever it's dope man i yeah. i'm i'm gonna go out and say that this salmon dial version of this watch is a lot nicer than the white dial i agree i agree with that there's the uh 5170 5172 yeah. uh chrono yeah which is fire the blue dial is pretty the, salmon's prettier. The yeah. salmon is gorgeous. I like the blue dial too, though. I also love yeah. the placement of the sub dials. And I love the fact that they're kind of off center from the crown. Right? I like yeah, the, they're under it. They're like under, the, it. under it. I like the 765 too. I, exactly. I was just about to, to, to point that out because I like that the fact that like the three, the four, and the, the eight and the nine are, are off the dial. Yes. Like to me, that's just really, really cool. It's different. Like I, I don't recall seeing that anywhere before. Um, it just feels fresh, right? So there's something about it that, again, it's kind of like a mashup. Like there's some old school flair if you like vintage watches, yep. but there's definitely like a new, a new language going on in terms of like how they're designing it. I think it's a fresh take on like a vintage aesthetic. That's really, really cool. So I was a big fan of this. Um, this was because I went into this like, you know, I'm not a crazy Patek guy. I like him. Yes. But I don't go crazy over Patek. Yeah. But that. I went crazy over this release. Everything they put out, I was like, Because Patek bangs, that's why. <laughs> They're the most consistent brand out here. Clean, clean sweep. So Yeah. It was a clean sure. sweep for sure. Uh, what do you what do you think is the one that people are gonna go crazy over this year? I think that annual calendar travel time. Yeah, yeah. I think so. For protect the annual calendar travel time. I think yes. so. Yes. I think I think that's the one that people are gonna go nuts. I for. think guys who have a lot of college travelers would love the fifty two twenty six G. I also think that same guy might be like, oh, I don't really like the dial. I like can skip on that. If I get a watch with that dial, I want the one. Yeah. I want the one with the annual calendar travel yeah. time. 
I gotta be honest. If 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 uh, this one was my favorite, if if I could get a Patek and I could only get one, I would be very happy with this. Yeah, I think this I'd be and, fine the, with and the fifty one seventy two salmon dollar. Yeah, I'm gonna be the ones people go after. Not mad at it, at all. Shout out to Patek, clean sweep. Clean sweep. Uh, they came. They saw. They conquered. Yes. Um, moving along. As we wrap up, this is uh, another brand that I was really, really excited about and interested in. And we talked about it in our Watches and Wonders episode where we were um, giving sort of our predictions and what mm. we had hoped to see. And that was Tudor. And uh, I remember one of the things that we were talking about, or at least I remember me, what I expressed was what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a Ranger. Yes. And um, one of you had mentioned, um, you know, either wanting to see or thinking that we would see a 58 style GMT. And these were like the two things yeah. that we were like, this is what we want to see from this. Yes. And we thought that like both options very viable. Yes. We also said, um, we, either, we also said like, I think, I don't know if, if I, if like we had exactly said like root beer, we were like, what if they I, did like I a Batman? Well, like, we talk about them doing like different colors, yeah. different GMT. Yeah, I mentioned, I mentioned like Coke bezel, what if, Batman. What if Tudor actually does the Coke bezel instead of Rolex? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's what it was. Yeah. So we talked about all those things, and uh, if I can get into it first, so we talked about fifty-eight GMT, yes, which a lot of people want. We talked about a Ranger, which a lot of people want, and these guys. Went ahead and just put them both together and said, We're gonna put them both together and we're gonna bring back to you a reinterpretation of the Explorer 2 Steve McQueen. Yes. And and call it the Tudor Black Bay Pro. Yes. Fire. Um in terms of what I can actually afford, <laughs> this is the watch the that Bay I want Pro. next. <laughs> <laughs> um this is this is dope, man. Fire. This is dope. They, uh, you know, I want. I've always wanted an Explorer too. Always wanted a Ranger. I want a Black Bay Fifty Eight GMT. They took all of those things. They rolled them up into one, and they said, "Here you go." And I might be able to check three boxes in one. Yes. I do have a beef. I do have a beef too. And it might be the same, but go ahead. And we had this beef. And the funny thing was when they released the watch, I think we were all up really, really early. And Perry might have been the first to send. He sent it. He yeah, sent he like hyped. so Perry sent this and was like, This is fire. And then we were all like, This is fire. And then of course Ben goes, This case is it's, like it's <laughs> thick. <laughs> like, it's like 14 millimeters. It's 14 and a half. 14 Yo, and a half. It is and, and, thick. And I it was comes like, why that. would goes, they do that? But Ben goes, 14, he goes 14.6 WTF, like exclamations, like yeah. live it. <laughs> and for me. It can't, it can't be a 58 and be that thick. That's what I was getting ready to say. That's so crazy. my thing is, my thing is, I love this watch. Yes. But the other side of me is like. Why did you put a smaller case out to make the it's, watch still but you equally know, But thick? you know what also drives me nuts about that? They're using the same movement that's in the current GMT. Yes. So why is there not a red and blue bezel Tudor GMT in a 58 case already? That's a good question. Yes. Now, my thing is this. I think Tudor had to respond because... Boom, like they caught fire. Yeah. This is this is a good response. This is a good response. But what I would have what I would have wanted was I would have said, you know what, great. I don't mind if the case is a 41. Just give me a thinner fucking watch. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That I think that part is what is more important to guys. The case is thick as hell. The I'm not gonna lie. The case is thick. It's thick. Um and it doesn't make sense for it to be smaller, because it's not gonna it's not gonna look this it's not yeah. gonna look or wear the same like it's just gonna be like this is still a big watch. I know, <laughs> I know, and it pains me because I want this watch so bad, 
and I don't want to regret getting it. Um, so I'll start with this. You know, if this is a viable option for anyone out there that's thinking about this, um, get it on a bracelet. Yes. You do not want a watch this thick on a NATO strap. No. Or a leather strap. No. It's too thick. You need the bracelet. Yes. This watch should only be available on the bracelet. I don't even know why they're offering other straps. <laughs> they should throw them in the box if I need to. Seriously. Yeah. Yes. Well, they probably do if you way. get the bracelet. You probably get a strap too. Um, I don't imagine that they'll give you the bracelet and not a NATO at least. Um, the other thing I noticed, no Cyclops. Yeah, on the date. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting choice. I'm not mad at it, but I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, home run. Yes. You know, um, some people are mad at the faux patina. I don't care. Whatever. Uh, some mad people. At the 58 too, then. Yeah, exactly. Some people are mad at the fact that this channel's directly like it's paying homage to a Rolex Explorer too. Don't care. How many of you are actually going to be able to afford the Steve McQueen? If Rolex is to do it again, this is a thirty dollars to $40,000 watch. They already yes. are. Yes. They already are. Vintage McQueen references. Exactly. For that much That's what I'm saying. So how many of you are going to pop off on a vintage $40,000 watch? You're not. This is, this is the only chance you have of, of, of getting it. So in terms of what we've talked about in the past with homage watches and homage brands, and traditionally, we aren't fans of it. This is a brand that's owned by the same company. Yes. Go for it. Who cares? Yes. Who cares? It's not in the mods. It's just using the same design. Design it's the right. same aesthetic. Yes. But that's what Tudor is. Agreed. And what, the way I took this release, I took it as a, a direct signal or flag of Tudor saying, we are going to fill the void that Rolex left. Yes. Rolex is saying, we don't want to be this tool watch brand. We want to be luxury. We are luxury. We're going to, start, we're going to p- compete with Paddock, AP, Vacheron. We want to be in that club. We, we're leaving what you know about us from the 1960s to the 80s, maybe even the 90s. Mm-hmm. Tudor is like, here we are. Let's go. We'll fill the void. Yes. That's who we are now. I love it. Yes. I think it's great. Um, if I am able to purchase this watch, if it is presented to me, I will pull the trigger. I'm getting it. I don't care how thick it is. <laughs> <laughs> it could be as thick as molasses. <laughs> I'm getting it. Um, I respect that. Yes. Uh, I loved it. They had a couple other releases. There was the Root Beer GMT. Um, Someone called this Diet Root Beer today. Oh, man. Oh, who's but the, you know what? Who's Let me be honest. I'm not a fan. Me either. I'm not a fan of it. Mm. Um, what, so here's what I don't like. I don't like when Tudor does steel gold two-tone watches. I don't like the matte gold finish. Yes, that it, they sh- do. it should be. It should actually be uh, polished instead of blasted. But also, and and maybe maybe exactly maybe maybe that's what I really dislike about it. But I also feel like you know what, guys, you're gonna do a root beer GMT. Just do a gold watch. Yes, go full gold. Just go for it. They have, but I think you know people still can't wrap their heads around a gold. Tudor. I mean, I'm one of them. I'm not interested in the gold Tudor, but I would prefer that than to a two-tone. Yes. The best thing they could have done was steel. This watch actually looks better on the NATO and yeah. the strap, Way better. which yes. is crazy. Yeah. Because the, the, the bracelet, the bracelet, because it's, because it's brushed, I mean, because it's blasted, it, it looks, it looks cheap. cheap. It I didn't want to say, say, I call say spade it, to spade. It, it, it looks so cheap. cheap. It and so then cheap. when you talk about the next one that they released too, the Chrono, the chrono. it's oh, like, guys, yeah, I didn't even come that was a new watch. Guys. No, I didn't know. No, that's what I'm saying. I was like, what? Is did new? we see this before? Yeah, yes. I was so confused. I'm like, what? All they did was change the dial. So the dial is black with 
that champagne sub dials on the original one. Yes. So now they flipped it. Yes. Who cares? Now, what, what, so going back to, you know, because I wanted to kind of bridge this new Black Bay Chrono with the Black Bay Pro is like, okay, so you, you decided to continue with this, um, you know, um, in-house, like kind of like collaboration with like Brightland with the B01 and you go ahead and you do that. Why didn't you just do the Black Bay Pro and do it with the Meta certified movement because it actually is a thinner movement. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and then secondly, even with this piece here, we we know that the Chronos, especially partnering with Brightland and the movements and the technologies, is giving this brand a lot of grief. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. And listen, and to be honest, it's not the only one. Yes. I mean, I've seen a lot of complaints about Tudor right now with their movements. There's a lot of people having really bad experiences with their watches. Exactly. In terms of like, I saw a complaint the other day with a guy who he had a, a bronze Black Bay 58 and his second hand, it just gets stuck between six and seven. And it's just like, just going back and forth. And he's mm. like, what the hell is happening? Mm. Um, and then there was another video I saw with a gentleman who had a, um, the 925 Black Bay 58. And the movement just stopped working. Yes. Brand new watch. Uh, and there are tons of stories like this, which is really unfortunate for a brand that's owned by Hans Wildorf. Um, you know, they have the resources to develop in house movements without the help of Breitling. I don't know if the issue is Breitling. I don't know if there are other things at play, but figure it out, and get it done. Yes. Because the complaints are mounting. And piling up to the point to where I've talked to people who are Tudor fans and they are second guessing buying Tudor watches. Yes. Now, what I will say to Tudor's defense, and this is a conversation that we did have like via text and like DM and stuff was like, so Tudor is kind of like a baby as well. Sure. Um, because they re-entered the US market mm -hmm. in 2013. Yeah. So they are figuring out what the deal is and then i if i'm not mistaken and i could be wrong i believe that their first in-house black bay was in 2015. Mm -hmm. so past that point they relied so think about it their assembly and their technology was all outsourced so assembly was rolex yep. and then outsourcing was etta and salita so we know Ed and Salita, as much slack as they get, those are like wor workhorses of they work. a movement. So they go ahead and they say, okay, great. We want to elevate and we want to step our game up. Let's go ahead and let's introduce a new uh, a new movement and let's you know work with these different brands and do different certifications and all these kind of things. But like they're still running into these roadblocks. So I... I, I look at Tudor right now as kind of like a startup almost. Mm. Because think about it, they almost, they're just getting into like a decade of being back in the United States. That's true. Um, and I mean, t to their, you know, to their defense, they do still have amazing customer service. Mm -hmm. Any of the issues that people have had with their watches, um, in most cases, they just replace the watch. You get a brand new watch. Yes. Um, which, you know, listen, I'm not going to stop buying Tudor because they're having issues. Um, I haven't had an issue with any of mine. Yes. Um, but the complaints are mounting to the point I'm hearing it and, 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 and people are concerned. And that's sort of what I'm hearing. But in terms of this release with Watches and Wonders, movements aside, um, one out of three for me. I think the Black Bay Pro is a hit. Black Bay Pro is a hit. Um, you know, I don't think the Chrono and the GMT are bad watches. I'm just not a fan. I and, and to be honest, I expected a little more. Like you talking about just a general Black Bay mm -hmm. GMT in a 58 case. Why have we still not seen it? Yes. Kind of strange. Uh, but maybe they have something planned, right? When you think about like 
what they you think about watch watches and wonders last year and what they released and then what they released after it so you know they got tricks up their sleeves yeah we're still due for more like watches exactly yes. like they're gonna yes. put out more stuff and i'm sure they're saving the best for later yes uh because that is what they do we got the fxd last year we got the black ceramic we also got the black bay in uh in in bronze yeah that all came like three the hits year. after watches of wonders so yes um slow burn for a, a bigger fire later perhaps i agree we'll see uh but the black bay pro is on my hit list i need to i need to i need to get that so we gotta <laughs> make that happen um but yeah so that's it for now it's watches and wonders um that was tudor and i think we covered everything guys yeah we might have yeah um so that makes up this episode uh we will be back next week for episode 19. um we've got a special guest that's going to join us um and that should be a lot of fun and um you know please catch us or and catch up with us on instagram at risk check pod we're on TikTok spotify with audio and video we're on youtube um google Podcasts, apple Podcasts. get in touch listen watch subscribe like comment share uh reach out to us you guys have been very active in the dm contacting us and contact us in the comments and we try to be as responsive as we can uh but we we actually do enjoy uh speaking with you all and, and and engaging with you all so don't stop keep doing it and uh we'll see you next week peace, peace. deuces <laughs>